we're going to take a look at antibiotics that inhibit protein synthesis. So there's quite a few antibiotics that will do this. So we'll look at the aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, macrolides, lincosamides, and chloramphenicol. We won't look at the linozolids, so you don't have to memorize those. But I would make a list of those antibiotics that do inhibit protein synthesis and just list these antibiotics in red and just know that for the exam. The other thing that I would note for the exam is how these antibiotics work. So what they do is they bind to 70S ribosomes. And if you remember that these 70S ribosomes are found in prokaryotes like bacteria. And so by binding to the 70S ribosomes, they will inhibit the protein synthesis. And then that can either kill the bacteria or inhibit their reproduction. And the next question I would also note for the exam, do these antibiotics affect our cells? So they don't affect eukaryotic cells because our cells have ADS ribosomes and these antibiotics do not bind to ADS ribosomes. The only way that they could cause problems with our cells is that they could bind to the 70S ribosomes that are in our mitochondria. So that could potentially cause some side effects. So that could potentially cause some problems. But in general, these antibiotics don't affect our cells because they don't bind to the ADS ribosomes that we have. Okay, the only thing that you need to know on these antibiotics is just what's in red. And also, I know that I wrote um, where specifically they bind on the ribosome, but you just need to know that they bind to 70S ribosomes and they interfere with protein synthesis, and that's all you need to know. So I'm not going to ask you, oh, aminoglycoside antibiotics, they bind to the 30S ribosomal subunit. You don't need to know that. Just know that they bind to 70S ribosomes. That's all you need to know. Okay, so these aminoglycoside antibiotics, um, there's quite a few of them which you don't need to memorize, but um, if you're working in a hospital or a clinic, you might have heard of some of these. Um, some of the ones that are used are genomycin, amikacin. Sometimes they'll use tobramycin, like in... Um, eye drops, um, neomycin, if you have some neosporin at home, um, that one's used as one of the three antibiotics in neosporin, so it's just used topically. And streptomycin is the first aminoglycoside antibiotic that was discovered back in the 1940s. And it actually, um, just kind of an interesting side note, was the first antibiotic that was used to actually cure TB. Um, these antibiotics, you don't need to know this, but they actually come from Streptomyces uh, soil bacteria. So that's where the, the name Streptomycin came from. So there's a picture of the uh, soil bacteria growing right there. So, but you don't need to know that. Okay, so the aminoglycoside antibiotics, if you're giving these internally, uh, if you're using them topically, you don't have to worry as much, but if you're giving them internally to a patient, there are some toxic side effects that we need to worry about. So the two that we worry about that we can see with these aminoglycoside antibiotics is they can be nephrotoxic, 
which means they can harm the kidneys and can actually cause the patient to go into renal failure. So if you have a patient that's on genomycin or amikacin, for example, they will check the kidney function and make sure that it's staying okay because if the kidney function starts to decline, then they will have to take them off that antibiotic. And then the other serious side effect that we can see with the aminoglycoside antibiotics is that they can be ototoxic. And oto means ear. So these antibiotics can actually cause deafness. So that's a really bad side effect, is that they could cause deafness. So that's not very good. So we generally don't like to use the aminoglycoside antibiotics unless we really have to. Okay, so um, topically, we're not gonna see these side effects, but if we're having to use them internally in a patient, we can certainly see these side effects. And so we try not to use these unless we really have to. Okay, and then this is just a picture just showing you the aminoglycosides and you can see them binding to the ribosome, the 70S ribosome here. And that's gonna mess up how the ribosome is doing translation and then the proteins don't get made correctly. And this picture, you don't have to know the rest of it, but it just stresses the bacteria out and they go through this stress response and they end up producing free radicals and they commit suicide. So that's how they die. Okay, our next protein synthesis inhibitor antibiotic, these are the tetracyclines, and you can see how they got their name from their chemical structure, tetra meaning four, and they've got these four rings that are bound together, and so you can see why they're called tetracyclines. There's a number of tetracycline antibiotics um, you can take a look at these, but you don't have to memorize any of these names at all. Um, but doxycycline is one of the ones that can be used um, commonly, so uh, that's one that you might have seen used in patients. But all you need to know is what's in red, and again, I'm not going to ask you like which ribosomal subunit it binds to, just know that it binds to the 70S ribosomes and inhibits protein synthesis, and that's all you need to know. Uh, the tetracyclines are very broad spectrum antibiotics, and they're used to treat quite a few things, um, including the rickettsial bacteria, remember those cause the spotted fevers, like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, um, and they're also used to treat uh, chlamydia infections as well. Okay, our next antibiotic that inhibits protein synthesis in the bacteria by binding to the 70S ribosomes will be the macrolides. And why they got that name, macro means big. And if you look at their chemical structure, they have this giant sized ring. And so that's how they got the name macrolide. Um, I'm not going to ask you which ribosomal subunit they bind to, but just they bind to the 70S ribosome, inhibit protein synthesis. One of the macrolide antibiotics that you might have heard of or be familiar with is Zithromax. That's the brand name. It's also called a Z-Pack, and the generic name is azithromycin, so you might have heard of that one. So, and there's a couple of others like erythromycin, that's the uh, first macrolide that was discovered, so that's a, kind of an older one, so. Okay, lincosamines, um, another one that will bind to the 70S ribosomes and inhibit protein synthesis. And one of them that um, you might have heard of if you're working in a hospital or a clinic is clindamycin. So that's one that um, can be used in patients. And it can be used to treat a couple of different types of infections. Um, it's really good at getting anaerobic bacteria 
and can also be used to treat staph and strep infections as well. And again, you only need to know what's in red. That's it. Okay, and then our last antibiotic that binds to the 70S ribosomes in the bacteria and inhibits protein synthesis is chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is actually not used in this country anymore. Um, the only place you might see it used is um, as a eye medication, and that's it. It's not used internally at all. And that's because it has a really nasty, bad side effect. Um, the side effect is pretty rare, but you just never know who it's going to happen to. Um, and if it does happen, it's really bad. So the toxic side effect that can happen with chloramphenicol is aplastic anemia. So what this is, A means without and plastic is growth. And anemia is talking about you've got a low number of blood cells. And what happens is chloramphenicol triggers off triggers an autoimmune disease where your immune system attacks the stem cells in your bone marrow and kills them. And so then you can no longer make red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets. So you can't make any of your blood cells anymore. And then that will obviously lead to death. Um, in order to treat that, you'd have to do a bone marrow transplant and give the person new stem cells. So that is a really bad side effect. Um, they still do use chloramphenicol in developing countries because it's a really cheap antibiotic. So it doesn't cost a lot of money. So 